Well, it's Monday morning here in San Diego. The tents have been pulled down, the course is in pieces, but yesterday this place was packed as seven teams went into one of the most intense final rounds we've seen. The whole thing was webcast live over the internet, but if you missed it, here are some highlights. The crowds gathered at the Transdeck facility as the finalists made last minute adjustments and performed their final practice runs in the morning. Months of work all came down to this afternoon for the seven qualifying finalists. On their first run in the finals, Kyushu University from Japan was able to get through the gate and touch the yellow buoy, but then the sub mysteriously surfaced on the way to the hedge. The team pulled the sub back, made some adjustments, and tried again, erasing their score from the first run. Unfortunately, the sub surfaced before even crossing through the gate on the next two runs, and time ran out. It was a disappointing final run for Kyushu, landing them in seventh place, but they did walk away with a check for $1,000. The University of Texas Dallas was in second place going into the finals. Unfortunately, during the finals they saw their lowest performance all week, only managing to get through the gate, follow one path segment, and touch the red buoy. While their optimism remains high for next year, UTD walks away a bit disappointed this year, placing six. They were awarded $1,000. The only high school team competing this year was Amador Valley. They had some difficulties at first when their sub refused to advance and actually started moving backwards. But after a few code adjustments, they managed to go straight through the gate, follow two path segments, touch the red buoy, and traverse one hedge. Although they were hoping for better, Amador Valley was rightfully content with a fifth place finish and a check for $1,000. ETS from Canada also had difficulty getting a good start, but after a few attempts, they made slow but sure progress through the course. They passed through the gate, followed three path segments, touched both correct buoys, and passed over one hedge. That run landed them in fourth place with a check for $1,750. Maryland also had a little trouble early in their heat, but made some on-the-fly changes at the dock and ended up turning out a solid run. They went through the gate, but chose to skip the buoys altogether and go for the big points. They followed two path segments and went for the PVC structure, but wasn't quite able to grab it. They did surface in the correct octagon, although empty-handed. The sub then submerged again, looking for other challenges to complete, but wasn't able to locate them. Maryland comes in at a respectable third place with a check for $2,250. The U.S. Naval Academy went into the finals at fifth place, but had high hopes along with a few new tricks up their sleeves. Those tricks appeared to have paid off as they went straight through the gate, touched two correct buoys, passed over three hedges, and surfaced partially twice in both the incorrect and correct octagons. A great run for the U.S. Naval Academy, putting them in second place and bringing in a check for $5,000. Excitement was in the air and in the water, as Cornell was the last team to compete in the finals. Last year, they nearly completed every element of every challenge for their final run, and confidence was high again this year. On their first attempt, they moved straight through the gate, followed six path segments, touched the red buoy, passed over two hedges, dropped a marker in the primary and secondary bins, shot two torpedoes through the correct window, and then, suddenly, the sub froze in place looking for the PVC structure. As the minutes ticked by, everyone was on the edge of their seats, wondering if the sub would pull through. Unfortunately, after seven minutes with the sub in place, time was up for Cornell. The run was still solid enough to keep them in first place and bring home a prize of $6,000. Congratulations, Cornell, on another RoboSub win. Three special prizes were also granted at the awards party last night for other noteworthy accomplishments that caught the judges' attention. The first special prize was granted to San Diego City Robotics for their standout performance in the static judging phase of the competition. They were awarded the Best Group Presentation Award for $500. The second special prize went to Reykjavik University from Iceland. After a bad seal completely flooded their sub during Friday's qualifying run, Reykjavik worked day and night to rebuild their vehicle. They missed their second qualifying run on Saturday as they continued to rebuild, leaving them no chance of making the finals but they continued work anyway and impressed everyone when they met their personal goal and showed up Sunday with a rebuilt, functioning, autonomous underwater vehicle. For their steadfast spirit and resolve, Reykjavik University was granted the Determination Award for $500.
The teams that did not make it into the finals were allowed one last run on Sunday morning to compete for the second chance award of $1,000. The University of Central Florida snagged this third special prize. Once again, an amazing finals day at the RoboSub competition. Well, that's it for this year's RoboSub competition, and it was a blast. If you missed some, you can go to robosub.org. Find out about the teams, watch the daily recaps, you can watch the finals with team interviews, and our expert commentary from our panel, including Zaz Brooks from Prototype This. We want to thank AUVSI Foundation and ONR for making this possible, as well as the other sponsors, the teams that participated, and the individuals that volunteered. That's it for us this year, but we'll see you next year for RoboSub 2011.